So this is all life on Earth, measured in biomass. Every stick here represents 50 million tons of carbon. So how many of these sticks are human? Just one. 0.01% of all life on Earth. Let us see what the rest is. So you've read the title. You might be waiting for me to say that all the rest of this is made up of cows. And no, that is not true. We will zoom into mammals in a little while. First, I should say that this is a measure of biomass, meaning that every stick here doesn't represent a specific number of individual organisms, but a combined weight of carbon, the main material in organic matter. So a stick of ants would indicate many, many more ants than a stick of humans would and a stick of whale, far fewer individuals than a stick of humans. First of all, let us get rid of the largest group here by far. 82% of the biomass on Earth is made up of plants. Trees, grass, seaweed, flowers, bushes, you name it. In total, we have almost 11,000 sticks here, and 9,000 of them are plants. Another 1,400 sticks are bacteria, or 13%, marked in purple. Fungi, meaning mushrooms and yeasts and molds and so on, stand for 2.2%, or 240 sticks, marked in orange. Single cell microbes for another 1.5% or 164 sticks, marked in red. So called protists for 0.7% or 76 sticks, marked in green. And then we have the animal group that we will focus more on. Just 0.4% of the Earth's biomass is made up of animals marked in yellow, 44 sticks. The rest here, four sticks in blue, are viruses. So let us zoom in to the animals. Here we have the two billion tons of animal biomass on Earth. Every marker here indicates 0.1% or two million tons. The biggest group here are arthropods, which make up 42% of the animal biomass. These are invertebrate animals with an exoskeleton and a segmented body. Basically, all insects, spiders, bees, shrimp, crab, mites, scorpions, centipedes and so on. We mark these in green. Then we move on to fish. 29% of the animal biomass is made up of fish. We mark all of those in blue. Eight percent are made up of so-called annelids, meaning ragworms, earthworms and leeches. We mark those in orange. Another 8% is made up of mollusks, snails, slugs, clams and octopuses belong here, and is marked in pink. We move on to Nidaria, that make up 4%, jellyfish, corals, gorgonians and similar, mainly marine animals. We mark these in white. 
0.8% are made up of nematodes, basically small worm-like animals that have adopted to live in whatever environment available. We mark these in silver. And finally we have one marker, around 0.08% of animal biomass, marked in red, that is made up of wild birds. And the rest here, close to 7%, are mammals, marked in purple. And with that, we zoom in once more. There are around 163 million tons of mammal biomass on Earth. Here every marker represents 0.1% of that. Let us start with ourselves. In 2022, we passed 8 billion humans living on Earth. Today, we make up 34% of the mammal biomass on Earth. We mark humans in yellow. Then we have an assortment of domesticated animals, livestock and pets. Sheep make up 5% of the mammal biomass. We mark sheep in light blue. Goats, another 3% in a darker blue. Horses, 2% in white. Buffalo, 5% in brown. Camels, around 1% in gold. Donkeys, around the same in silver. And we have pets of a variety of species, around 1% in red. Then we move on to pigs. 12% of mammal biomass on Earth are made up of domesticated pigs, marked in pink. And cows make up 35% of all mammal biomass, marked in orange. And we are left with 4%. 4% that represent all wild mammals on Earth. All elephants and zebras and mooses and squirrels and possums and bats and giraffes and monkeys and mice and seals and rabbits and antelopes and whales and boars and deer and bison and yaks and rhinos and tigers and ferrets and bears and foxes and gazelles and hyenas and jaguars and otters and wolves and lions and kangaroos and dolphins and so on and so on. They all fit within that 4% green group in the corner. We humans are experts in changing the environment around us. The invention of agriculture and the change in land use that it caused has been a driving factor in pushing wild animals away and driving many of them to extinction. Before the agricultural revolution, it is believed that wild mammals on Earth had a biomass of 20 million tons. Today, that number is around 3 million tons. And that drop can be explained by human behavior. But it is also important to note that while the wild populations are dropping, the total number for mammal biomass on Earth is at an all-time high by far. We are now so many people on Earth, and we feed so many cows and pigs and so on, that the mammal biomass on Earth is way, way higher than it ever was before. And of course, cows are at the epicenter of why that development is a problem. As I pointed to in my climate emissions visualization, close to 6% of our emissions of carbon dioxide equivalents comes directly from livestock, and more are released in associated processes in food production. There is no doubt that raising cattle for food production is inefficient. The land use for growing crops for livestock consumption could be reduced significantly if we grew crops for direct human consumption instead. A reduction in the number of livestock in the world would release less greenhouse gases and it would lessen the need for agricultural land and hence the pressure on wild animals. It could also reduce the number of animals kept in inhumane conditions. Another major problem is poaching, killing especially large mammals for food and body parts. This is partly driven by poverty, 
a scarcity in food can increase the need for hunting of wild animals. Poaching is also driving changes in the ecosystems, since we tend to hunt the larger animals more. This means smaller animals like rodents thrive. More rodents and more close contact between humans and wild animals can result in more pandemic outbreaks, like we saw with COVID-19. Large animals are more vulnerable in general. During the so-called Quaternary Megafauna extinction, between 52,000 years BC and 7,000 years BC, the larger animals went extinct in a much higher degree than smaller ones. This mass extinction is largely believed to have been driven by human hunting. And these finds match what we see in the world today when we look at what species are under threat. In other mass extinction events on Earth that were not driven by human activity, we do not see this trend, that the larger animals were more at risk. Of course, this is a problem with ecosystems in our lakes and oceans as well, that we take up too many of the larger species and the larger individuals of those species. But we will not go further into fishing in this video. Humans make up a large share of the mammals on Earth, 34% of the biomass, and a sizable share of the animals in general, 2.5% of the biomass. But for all life on Earth, we are but a tiny sliver of it. 0.01% of the total biomass on Earth. We outnumber all the animals mentioned before in the list of mammals, all the lions and bears and elephants and so on. But when it comes to insects, or fish, or for that matter bacteria, or fungi, and especially if we compare to all plants on Earth, we might as well be a rounding error. But we have great impact still, and by acknowledging that, we can make sure to see the problems we cause. Problems for other species, and for ourselves. The invention of agriculture and the domestication of some species has its problems, that should be addressed to a much more sufficient level. But it has also been a driving, if not necessary part of human development. A development that means that most humans on Earth today have enough food to eat, live safe lives and have way more economic and social opportunity than their parents and grandparents did. But when it comes to this diagram, maybe a few more green markers would be good for all of us, and probably less of the orange ones. Thank you for watching this video on the biomass of the Earth. You might be interested in my videos on emissions. You can see them by following the link in the description below. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching.